Hello, Kennedy. It's Mrs. Turner here today. Um, I promised you something um, that I've been working on, and um, so here goes. Um, I wanted to do a screencastify on what trauma is and how it's impacting you and why you're feeling the way that you're feeling, and um, so here goes. Uh, trauma is um, described as what happens when a person is overwhelmed by events or circumstances and responds with intense fear, horror, or helplessness. These extreme and intense feelings negatively impact a person's ability to cope. And so right now, I think we can all acknowledge um, some fear, some horror at what's happening with people and the society, and definitely some helplessness. So those definitely categorize us as being in a traumatic event. So I know people talk about coping skills a lot, and I could do a whole nother screencastify on just what coping skills are and why you need them. Um, but I wrote down a few that work really well um, for students, parents, staff, myself personally. Um, first, you have to acknowledge that what you are going through is traumatic. And then you have to connect with people that are going through it or went through it before. It's really important to exercise, relax, listen to or make music, create and appreciate art, have a balanced diet, keep a consistent sleep schedule, avoid stimulants like coffee, sugar, things like that, um, commit to doing something meaningful each day, and then to journal through it. And you've noticed that a lot of my mental health minutes talk about doing these kinds of things, reading, getting outside, being active. Um, so you've probably been doing a lot of these coping skills without even realizing it. So keep up the good work, find the ones that work for you and continue to utilize them. Um, next is when you are experiencing a traumatic event and you are going through it, you're going to react to it not only uh, mentally, but also physically. And so you could start having physical pain, maybe headaches, stomach aches. Uh, you just really can't figure out why you've got that headache or migraine or you're, you've ate a healthy meal, but your stomach's still really bothering you. You could have, again, changes in sleeping and eating habits. So that's why having that healthy coping skill of having a set schedule will help you because your body will be reacting negatively um, with sleeping and eating as a coping mechanism to kind of shield you from things that are going on. You could be feeling depressed, anxious, out of nowhere you're really angry or rageful. You could have fear, guilt, and we're all feeling isolated, um, but also emotional swings. Now the guilt comes into play here because I think everyone is going through this differently. Some people, it's not impacting them financially. Others, it is devastating them financially. Some love being home and being with their family. Others really loved being out and away from family. Um, you may have a healthy family and others may not. And so all of those feelings of guilt that you have, they're normal and they're real and it's okay to have them. Um, so we're going to slide down here to what are some examples of traumatic events? Um, so you could have trauma through living through a natural disaster or an accident, um, car crash at a young age, or maybe you live in a state where you experienced a hurricane. Um, those are definitely traumatic events. Grief and loss, having someone that you love pass away obviously is going to help have you feeling helpless, uh, frustrated, hopeless, and just sad. Um, witnessing acts of violence can cause in, in incredible amounts of trauma, uh, whether it's um, violence within the family, violence uh, being observed on television, and even prolonged video games can cause trauma because you're having a hard time separating reality from fiction. Um, if you have escaped war, um, that could be a very traumatic experience. If you've lived through it, you're a refugee, you're coming through and trying to find your solace, um, definitely could be a traumatic experience. If you've survived medical interventions, maybe you're a cancer survivor, someone in your family is, um, you've had major accident that required surgery or things like that, all of that can cause trauma. And as well as childhood abuse and neglect can very much so impact your growth, your development, how you 
emotionally respond to things. So all of those fall into traumatic categories. And when you really look at it and you break it down that way, I bet you most of you have experienced trauma and that's okay. It's using those coping skills, talking to people, recognizing what you're thinking and feeling and working through it that will help you know that you can and you have gotten through this or are working through this. Because it's not necessarily something that you can conquer and you like look back and you go, yay, I'm done, I don't feel that anymore. Because you will, because it's impacted and kind of implanted in your life. I think of the movie, um, oh, it just slipped my mind. Um, the movie Inside Out, where you have all those core memories and then uh, the, or you have all those memories and then the five core ones that really shape you. If you experience a traumatic event, one of those core memories could be um, trauma. And so it really could have impacted you in every facet of your life. Um, but again, that's okay as long as you have good, healthy coping skills and uh, someone to talk to and help you work through that. Um, there's something called a window of tolerance, which I found really interesting. Um, I definitely did not take that photo. And I do have a work cited page for all of this, so I do not want to take credit for thoughts that were not my own. Um, but for the window of tolerance is on a normal day, you can kind of roll with the punches. Whatever's happening, um, you might feel stressed or pressure, but it doesn't bother you too much. But when you're in a traumatic event, you can either be hyper aroused or hypo aroused. And when you're hyper aroused, you're anxious, angry, out of control, overwhelmed, and you are experiencing the need to fight or flight or fight or run. And those are normal. They're not choices. And that is actually um, an instinct that you're born with. And then hypo arousal is you could be feeling spacey, zoned out, numb, even frozen, and your body wants to shut down. And so these reactions take over and these cannot be chosen either. Um, so think of it as if you're hyper aroused, that window is wide open. And so any one thing makes you just want to jump through that window or fly off the handle. But when it's hypo aroused, you think of that window being closed. But if you can find that happy medium, that window of tolerance where it's just the right amount of fresh air getting in and getting out, then um, you're in the good and happy zone. But if you recognize that you're either hyper or hypo um, aroused, then you're in the throes of your traumatic experience and you're gonna to need to talk to someone, whether it is your parents, a counselor, a friend, uh, a trusted adult, but recognize that if you are talking to a friend, that's good because that's one of those coping skills where you're talking with someone that's also going through it. But if you're finding yourself stuck in these hyper or hypo aroused states, and you really are falling under a lot of these feelings, the pain, fear, guilt, isolation, then you're going to need to ask for help. And so do not hesitate to talk to someone that you know you can trust that will get you the help that you need. And then I wanted to share this info as well, because right now, I mean, I am a mom of two. I have a five and a seven-year-old. Me and my husband are now having to homeschool. And so what we are actually doing right now is we are being teachers for our kids and so what we need to do is um, recognize how we can teach our kids when they're also in a traumatic experience. And so there's do's and don'ts of trauma-informed, compassionate classroom that a lot of your teachers have been trained in or, or know how to work with your students on, but you might not because you're also in a traumatic experience. So what you need to do is make sure you create a safe space base. Um, help your child, student, or students um, figure out what um, area they'd like to work in. Make sure they know that that is their one area where they're going to set aside all things school related. Establish predictability. Make sure they have a set schedule, a, a definite lunch, a definite breakfast, snack time set in. Make sure you, they uh, have frequent rewards for completing certain tasks and make sure that um, they have some downtime worked into their schedule as well. And for you too, you're going to need downtime too, parents slash teachers. You're going to need to build a sense of trust. So you're going to follow through with your promises in situations where changes are unavoidable and be transparent. Um, don't make promises you can't keep. Don't say, you know, on this date, we're going to go here and do this because we don't know. Don't, um, 
tell them you expect them to do something. And then when they don't, you don't provide a consequence. They need to know you are going to be the parent and the teacher and that you're going to be lenient and you're probably going to make mistakes because we all do, but you need to make sure that they can trust you and they can work with you. And that the main goal is that they feel your love, they feel your care, but that they also know that school is still important, but their mental health is very important. Um, offer choices. Um, so empowering students rather than forcing. I know a lot of times, even with my own kids, I talk about having a fake sense of control where you're going you're gonna to say like, okay, I want you, you have to do your schoolwork now. Would you rather do math or science? Or you have your normal everyday chores. Do you want to empty the dishwasher? Or would you rather make your bed first? And so it is giving a false sense of control to the, the child or the student, but it's also getting what needs to be done done. So it is a good strategy to use. And then stay regulated. So um, help them figure things out. Um, have a resiliency zone where they're able to really kind of work on themselves, work on their tools, maybe write down a page of coping skills that they can refer back to if they're feeling stressed, angry, or overwhelmed. Um, and know that all of those feelings are normal. They are absolutely a part of life and a part of this situation that we're living in. Um, but they are all things that can be regulated, worked through, um, and helped out with. And there's really only one don't, and it's don't punish your kids or students for their trauma symptoms. So if they're feeling sick and you're getting frustrated because they keep complaining about that stomach ache, know that it's probably something a lot more than a stomach ache. If um, you're feeling guilty as a parent or um, as a student, don't, don't be mad at yourself for that. That's normal. If things are going okay for you in your house and, and you're you're doing the best that you can and really don't have any complaints, but you recognize others are, don't be mad at yourself. Don't feel that guilt. Know that it's okay. Um, so I am going to go over to my Works Cited page because I didn't go to school all this time to be a plagiarizer. Um, so I got some of this information from um, how uh, a couple different websites, which I included here, a couple really good resources. Echo training was great. There are, I would say that's more towards parents because some of the, the details and information provided might be a little bit tough on younger eyes um, as far as just the concepts, not pictures or anything, but just the concepts are tough. Um, and then that photo was from Modernized Windows. Um, but again, I like the picture of the window. Um, so I really am interested to find out what other uh, topics you'd like me to present to you. I know um, I had one of our parents reach out and provide me information on trauma, and that was very much appreciated. So thank you because that helped kind of spawn this project for me. So I do plan on doing something like this as often as needed. Please seek out Mr. Potowski at bplotowski at lsps.org. I should probably type that because there could be uh, questions for Mr. Potowski, for myself at jturner at lsps.org. Our, we are the two counselors. He is eighth grade and sixth grade A through L. I am seventh grade and sixth grade M through Z. And then also Mrs. Glombowski at lsps.org and she is our social worker. So please do feel free to reach out to us. We will get back to you. We have tons of resources. Uh, we do have telehealth conferencing for students and uh, parents and staff and anyone basically in the whole wide world that needs it right now we have all the resources you could possibly ask for so do not hesitate do not be embarrassed i just don't want you to feel overwhelmed so hopefully <clears throat> excuse me you have found this informational uh, I had a lot of fun working on it. It was a little stressful. I think I need to up my game and toss windows out the door and go with a Prezi or something much more interesting than that, but uh, I'm working on it. So um, thank you so much. Be kind to yourself. I know uh, the coping skill that I am going to do right now is some reading. So take it easy and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.